Hi, and thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa, and in today's video, this is going to be my second Friday Sews video. Thank you so much to everyone who let me know that it was Jen from Jen's Sewing Room who initially started the Friday Sews trend, movement, whatever we want to call it. Um, I took a peek at her YouTube this past weekend and she's got such a cool energy to her. I definitely recommend going and checking her out as I watched about like half of one of her videos. I didn't have a lot of time um, and she's fantastic. So definitely go and check her out and give her a follow. So today's video I think is going to be fairly quick as I'm about ready to start work and I want to make sure I get this video starting to upload relatively soon because last week my video I think took like eight hours to upload. The joys of country mountain Wi-Fi being very fickle. And um, last night we started getting some snow. That's totally normal this time of year. We get snow through like May 31st. And I think we've got like six or seven inches of snow now and it's still coming down. And the internet can be a little fiddly with the snow. Um, I did post something on my YouTube shorts with a little um, group of elk that I saw last night in the snow and I was able to video that. It's not the best quality because it was a little dark, but uh, we have huge herds of elk out here and it's so beautiful. And maybe I'll include some more photo uh, footage of the snow as um, I've learned to embrace having snow on the ground like nine months out of the year. I, uh, I've never been like a tropical weather person. I don't do well with like extreme heat or humidity. and. Clearly I have kind of like Nordic Scandinavian genes, so I think I'm built for this weather, but um, I do live vicariously through everyone else where I see this beautiful greenery everywhere all over the internet and people have beautiful flowers and gardens already popping and uh, that doesn't happen here until like June or July. And then we have two months of beautiful weather and then we have snow again. So, but I've learned to embrace it. I actually went outside this morning and walked around barefoot a little bit. I am a little, <laughs> little hippie <laughs> and uh, that's my version of my cold plunge is walking around barefoot in the snow for 30 seconds to a minute and I just sat out and um, listened to the birds as they sound so beautiful as I feel like when it snows everything gets very quiet and very still and just hearing the melody of the birds in the morning it's just so relaxing so yeah so that was my morning but anyhow so in today's video Oh, actually first I should start out by telling you what I'm wearing. This is the Stella top, or is it a Stella? I think it's Stella. Stella top by Paper Cut Patterns. I made this last fall with a um, kind of a fairly cheap Joann's linen fabric and I love this. I wear the top and the skirt quite often and I, I like having separates because I can wear this top. It actually looks super cool with bell, bell bottoms, I think. I am a huge bell bottoms girl. And, um, but yeah, I love, I love making the separates because you can mix and match your outfits. But I get so many compliments on this when I wear this on my skirt in public. And it's always kind of fun to be able to share that you made something too. So, um, yeah, so I definitely plan on making more of these in the future at some point. But anyhow, so let me get into, in today's video, we'll go over my latest make. And then I have a couple of projects kind of loosely in the works right now. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about life. We'll kind of see where this video goes since I am on a little bit of a time crunch. And I realize I'm probably talking a little faster because I don't want to keep you all here forever, but I probably should slow down a little bit. So my latest make is this dress here. And I it was the McCall's pattern M7946. And I know everybody's seen this pattern. It's probably totally played out by now. Um, I don't even know if people are still even using this pattern as it's definitely not on trend. I don't think maybe it still is. Um, this is really popular a couple of years ago, but I went with View D. I've had this pattern cut out for like two years and I've just never made it. And here's the line drawing in the back so you can kind of get a better idea of what options you have. It's a lovely dress, really easy to stitch up. Really all you need is elastic and um, I think it's like up to two, two and a half yards of fabric depending on your view and um, the width of your fabric. And I went with a size 10. My measurements, my bust is 33 and a half inches, my waist is 26 inches and my hips are 38 inches. And this worked out pretty well. I only made a couple of little tweaks to, okay, my power is out. Um, so I'm gonna finish up this video here and then I have to drive into town to hopefully find a cell signal so that I can let my company know that I am not gonna be on today's meeting and I'm not gonna be starting work. So um, this is normal. We have a power outage at least once a year and with where we live, we're always the last town to get power back. Um, every year, usually our power goes out for two to three days at a time. 
And I just, I felt like we were overdue for power outage because we haven't had one yet today. So I'm gonna kind of quickly finish up this video so that I can um, quickly maybe edit it in town. Maybe I'll bring my laptop to a local coffee shop and work there and hopefully post this for you all today. So, <laughs> oh goodness, the mountain living, it's, uh, it's always an adventure. So I'm trying to think of where I left off now. Um, so with this dress, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a little bit nervous right now because my greenhouse needs heat and I have a lot of um, frost sensitive plants in my greenhouse right now. So I'm praying that the power will go back on by the end of the day today. Otherwise, all of my starts for this year's um, gardening season are not going to make it. And I have a lot of, I'm growing more flowers this year than vegetables just because I wanted to kind of give myself a mental break from all the work of gardening at high altitude because it's really challenging here. Um, so we'll see what happens. I have a generator, but that can only power up so much. So, oh, goodness. Okay, let me try to finish this up. I feel a little scattered now. I'm trying to think of where I left off with the stress. Um, but anyhow, so I apologize that this video is going to be a little more choppy. But as for the stress, so I, um, oh yeah, so we use bias tape for the casing here. And then we thread elastic through here. And that's what you do throughout the whole dress. And I had just tons of bias tape that I bought at my local creative reuse center. If you have one in your area, or if you've never even heard of it, definitely look into seeing if you have a creative reuse center, which is basically where people will go and donate um, like fabric and all kinds of crafty things. It can be woodworking things. They'll donate them and then you can buy them for a really good deal. So I get a lot of things for super cheap and I get bias tape for like 10 or 15 cents for each little packet of it. So luckily I had that handy. And then what they recommend for you to do is to use three eighths inch of an inch of an elastic to thread through the bias tape. But for me, I found that it was kind of a struggle to really get that through. Maybe it was just me, but I did so as close to the edge as I could of the bias tape since you're stitching it into the fabric. So I ended up switching to a quarter inch elastic to thread through two of the four and it made my life a lot easier. So that might work well for you. And I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit darker in here. I think we have skylights in this area um, or in my whole living space, but all of my extra ambient light is now not working because of the power outage. Um, and then the other modification that I made was that I extended the bodice a little bit because I mentioned before I work out, so I kind of have some built chest muscles and things. I mean, I don't look like a massively jacked bodybuilder, but they, they have filled out quite a bit over the years. So I find with anything with a square neckline, if it hits anywhere lower than like where my armpit creases, it just doesn't look great on me. So I ended up actually extending the bodice up maybe like seven or um, three quarters of an inch um, upwards. And that gave me enough coverage and I felt like the dress hit in kind of all the right spots. So if maybe you are more busty or you have a similar issue or maybe you have like broader shoulders or broader chest, you might want to extend the bodice up a touch. Um, and I'm like a solid B cup. So, um, not massive up there, but because of the chest muscles, I like to tweak those things. So I thought this was just beautiful. I loved this fabric. Um, I think it's such a beautiful color and it was a dream to, to stitch up. I, uh, I can't really think of anything else really to add with this dress. It was very delightful and I'm glad that I didn't use the fabric godmother fabric, as I mentioned, I think, um, that I thought maybe it would look a little bit too young. So yeah, it's beautiful and it passes my test of does it go with either Birkenstocks or cowgirl boots? I don't think I've mentioned this before in my videos, but um, I live in Birkenstocks and or cowgirl boots year round. I wear Birkenstocks in the dead of winter. I'm one of those weirdos. Um, and I also wear cowgirl boots year round too. So pretty much all the clothes I buy or make have to either go with Birks or the boots. Otherwise, they're, it's just not gonna not gonna work with my uh, my lifestyle. So I felt like this passed the test for both, which was wonderful. And yeah, definitely recommend making this pattern. I thought it was nice and easy. And I did almost make the variation with the sleeves, but sometimes I find if fabric's a little too structured, like a lawn or a poplin or quilting cotton, sometimes these kinds of sleeves just really poof out too much. And I feel like they make my shoulders look too broad. So I typically, I've learned, I should say, to really only make these types of um, sleeves if I'm using more of like a rayon or something really lightweight. So anyhow, um, I'm going to kind of try to speed this video up because I've got to get somewhere with hopefully internet. And sometimes 
there's not even internet in town. The nearest town um, for me is an hour from my house where I can actually even access like a cafe with Wi-Fi. So today's going to be an adventure. Maybe I'll just turn this into like a vlog and I'll take you all with me and show you. Um, maybe I could vlog a little bit this weekend of like what we do in the mountains when we have power outages because we have a wood burning stove, we have a generator, all the things. So maybe let me know if that's something you're interested in and maybe I'll just turn this into like an additional vlog or maybe I'll post this and then do a vlog this weekend of country living <laughs> um, with no power. So the next thing I'll show you all is what I'm currently working on. I've kind of got two projects in the works right now. Um, I did cut up all this fabric. This is a Liberty London fabric that I got like two years ago. And I'm going to be making the Lise Taylor Pauline dress. And I showed this in my spring and summer sewing plans video, but hopefully you can kind of see the line drawing. And it's kind of cool because there's a little drawstring here. So you can cinch up the top a bit if you want to just kind of give a little peak of your midriff but if that's not what you're about then you don't have to do that and there's some shirring in the bodice so I think this will go great with this fabric here this is part of my sewing plans and I'm actually following through with it so we'll see if I can even work on it this weekend in case our power doesn't come back on I don't know what's even going to happen with that and then I have another little project that I've been working on um so I have this really pretty linen bedding from bed threads it's like um a dusty salmon color, if anything. And we only had it for like nine months and it got a huge hole in it in our fitted sheet. And I could have stitched it up, but I thought, I don't know, it it already is torn once and that area is really worn down. I don't know, maybe my husband's feet are like really scratchy or something, which is shocking because I have much worse calluses than he does. But anyhow, so I decided I'm gonna upcycle these bed sheets because I want to get my money's worth. And so, um, but this color does not look good with my skin tone at all. I don't look good in like really muted or muddy kind of colors, dusty colors that is. So I spent some time over the last couple of days and I dyed this sheet and it's not exactly the color I was hoping for, but I feel like, I feel like I, oh, I got fuzzy all over it. I feel like I can still pull this off. Um, I used some writ dye and I did a couple of patch tests. I'll show you a photo of some different colors I was going for. And I didn't think about how concentrated it would be doing like a small patch test versus like dye in a larger vat of water. So I kind of feel like I need to add a touch more warm to this to make this more of like a vibrant coral, but we'll see. And what I'm going to be doing with this bed sheet is I found on a shop called Fabrics Store. Um, I'll put a picture up here and link it down below. It's fabricsplural-store.com. Um, they have really beautiful linen and cotton fabric there, but they also have some patterns for free there. And I found a really pretty pattern and I thought, um, why not try to do some things on a budget, especially now that I just bought that new sewing machine. I'm trying to really be more frugal at least for the next you know, 12, 18 months or whatever it is I need to pay it off. And I'm gonna try to sew my stash and things. So I thought if I upcycle this, I use a free PDF and I just use my thread, it only cost me a few dollars, not factoring in how much I paid for the original sheet. So I found a beautiful dress pattern and it's free. To my understanding, um, what you do is you can print the PDF pattern and then they have a blog post that shows you how to put the garment together. So I'll let you all know kind of how that goes um, after I finish that up. And yeah, but a great place to get some free patterns. And then also as for free patterns, um, Mimi G has a free pattern. I posted it on my um, YouTube community tab or whatever it's called. Um, I think I called her Mig in one of my previous videos when I was talking about a pattern I picked up. I think I said Mig patterns. I don't know why, because it's Mimi G. Um, but if you go to her Instagram, she has a really beautiful dress called the Jessica dress. And if you go to the post, which I'll link in the description below, um, you go to the post and it tells you to comment, I think like Jessica in the thread and then in your DMs, so she'll send you the free PDF pattern. So another great pattern to check out. I think it's a really, really pretty dress. It could even look cute as a separate if you make like a crop top and a skirt. So I downloaded that a couple of days ago and I'm gonna add that to my sewing plans, but definitely go check that out. It's always great to get a free pattern. Even though I don't really love PDFs, as I've said before, I hate cutting out the pieces and taping them together, but if it's free, it's for me. So that might be a good one. And then um, I didn't participate in So Frugal, but I did notice on Mood Fabrics the other day, I was looking at some fabric, that they also have a ton of free patterns. I'm sure you all probably know all of these things already. Um, as I know, a lot of you are well more versed with some of the sewing things than I am. But I thought I'd share that as I'm really going to be doing a lot of more, a lot more um, kind of budget sewing over the next year as I'm trying to just kind of 
um, save a little bit since I do have to pay off my sewing machine. And so if I come across any great um, sales or patterns that are free or anything, I'll try to mention them in my Friday sews. Which reminds me, Liberty London, since I just talked about a Liberty fabric, I got an email from them yesterday or the day before saying they're having a sale. I think it's through like May 12th. I could be wrong on the dates. And they do have some of their fabric on sale. I checked their Tana Lawn, which I love. And some of it is on sale. I think it's like 30% off or something. So if you love Liberty London and have had your eye on fabric, my, now could be a good time to pick some up. And um, yeah, so... I need to hit the ground running today and figure out things now that I have no power. Um, and I have to, basically it's kind of wild because we have livestock, right? So um, their water bowls freeze and things like that. Um, and unfortunately I haven't topped off the horse water trough so it doesn't have a lot of water in it so that's going to freeze. So I'm going to have to go out and start breaking the ice and doing all that kind of stuff and making sure making sure the crew is okay outside and checking my greenhouse and also possibly going to town to work. So it's going to be a wild day today. So I'm sorry if I seem a little bit more um, scattered than normal. I know I usually get on site tangents anyways, but yeah, not having power has thrown me a little curveball because I know how long this normally lasts for. So I hope you all are off to a beautiful start to your weekend and are enjoying the beautiful warm weather in most other places where you guys are at. Um, I'd love to know what you guys are up to this weekend. Are you sewing anything? Are you gardening? Um, what are your plans? And yeah, hopefully I can get this up today. We'll see how everything goes. And thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. And I will see you all very soon.